Recently, I was looking for an RF wake-up receiver for my current project. It's a battery-powered project, and I needed to be powered off until a low-power module receives an RF signal and wakes the whole thing up. While hunting around for something cheap, available, and suitable, I found this module on AliExpress by Anthem. It was advertised as the DC 3.5V, 6V, 9V, 12V RF wireless remote control 333MHz lithium battery power outlet on-off mini small switch module controller. Unfortunately, it didn't come with any documentation, but I figured out how it works, so I thought I'd share a short tutorial here. I should mention that Anthem has a YouTube channel, as shown here. They seem to make lots of different types of RF receivers and transmitters, but unfortunately they don't have a video covering the one that I bought. Also their videos are quite short, not primarily in English, and are a little ambiguous. The receiver module comes with a battery powered transmitter, like a regular garage door opener kind of thing. In fact, I got this with two identical transmitters. They work in the 333 MHz band, which is license free in a lot of countries, for use by short range low power devices like this one. Each transmitter has a unique built in ID that you can't change. I ordered my receiver with two remotes so that these two remotes would have the same ID. The receiver can be paired to tra particular transmitter IDs. Let's do a quick review of the receiver. Here's the antenna. You can stretch it out and play with it to try to get a better reception, but I didn't find that necessary because I can transmit about 30 meters with this through my house and car without any issues. There are four wires attached to it. Here is VCC and ground, and then we have a blue wire, which is our signal out. Then we have a second ground lead, which is physically connected to the first. The transmitter has two buttons. When you buy these, you can get them with different icons on them, but I'm pretty sure they're all identical on the inside. Each button transmits a different code. These transmitters are using the EV1527 chip to encode the radio signals, which is widely used in these types of RF remotes. The RF receiver could be more specifically called a EV1527 receiver because it should work with any of the many types of transmitter that use the EV1527 chip. You can also get EV1527 learning remotes, which can, clone the, which can clone the ID from an existing remote that you own. The EV1527 chip uses amplitude shift keying, or ASK, to send a 20-bit transmitter ID and a 4-bit button ID. And any compatible receivers in range will check the transmitter ID to see if it's paired to it. You can look up more information about this online by searching for EV1527. The receiver and remotes just worked out of the box for me, but I needed to pair an additional receiver to the same remotes. You might also be interested in the different modes that you can configure this to work in. Programming it involves shorting these two little pads here. We can place it in different modes, factory reset it, or pair a new remote. If you have an RF receiver that is similar but not identical to this, you might see these pads somewhere, somewhere else on the PCB or you might have a push button soldered over them, so you don't need to, do, to use tweezers like me. First, let's do a quick demo. When I press this button on the remote, we see the multimeter reading the voltage on the blue signal wire. It went up to nine volts. That happens to be the voltage my power supply is set to. The receiver is currently in momentary mode, so whenever I hold this down, I get the nine volts, and when I release, it goes back to zero. We can set the receiver to momentary mode, latched mode, toggle mode, and a few versions of latched mode with different timeouts. A quick note on power consumption and what attracted me to this receiver in the first place. This particular model, which is on the battery side powered of my project, has very low power consumption, which it achieves by being asleep most of the time. I took the information from the product listing and from my own testing to figure out what the sleeping schedule looks like. In summary, every 800 milliseconds it sleeps for 790 milliseconds and wakes up for 10 milliseconds. While sleeping, it has ultra low power consumption of about five microamps. And when awake, it draws about seven milliamps, which all averages out to about 100 microamps, which is ideal for battery powered projects like mine. In my project, everything except this receiver is fully powered off during standby, giving me a standby or quiescent current of just 100 microamps, which is the theoretically years of standby time. Let's try programming it. It's all about shorting these pads. 
Let's see if we can get the magnifying glass on it so you can see, which is a little fiddly with the camera in the way. If I short it with these tweezers, I get one flash, pause, two flashes, pause, three flashes, and I can release at any point to leave it in a certain configuration. That goes all the way up to a pattern of eight flashes and then it stops. If I touch these and wait for one flash, it can be a bit tricky to make sure you have contact. That's one flash. It should now be in momentary mode. So if I, if I press my primary button, I get VCC, release it, and it goes back to zero. The secondary button in this instance does nothing because it's in momentary mode. If I wait for two flashes, it should go into latched mode. So if I hold the contacts, one, two, I should now be in latched mode. If I hold the primary button, I get VCC, press it again, it stays at VCC, press the secondary button, it cancels it and goes back down to ground. The next mode is toggle and that's at three flashes. One, two, three. It should now be in toggle mode. When I press the primary button, I get VCC. If I press it again, it cancels it. One more time. Primary button gives VCC. If I pressed it again, it would go back to ground, but I can also use the secondary button to cancel it. So that's toggle mode, and in that mode, we only really need to use the primary button. I don't know what use that is, but I guess the circuit might be used in other kinds of controllers that have just one button, and maybe they are shipped from the factory in toggle mode. So that's one flash, two flashes, and three flashes. Four, five, six, and seven flashes give you different versions of latched mode with automatic timeouts. For example, six flashes is latched mode with automatic timeout after 60 seconds. You can reference the table at the end of this video for the summary of all of these modes. Now, if we wait for eight flashes, we factory reset the receiver. So let's try doing that. One, two flashes, three, four flashes, five flashes, six, seven, eight flashes. It should now be reset. So that means the remote now does nothing. It is unpaired from the receiver. At this point, we could get a different remote with a different ID built into it and pair it, or we can pair this remote again, or in fact, we could swap the order of the buttons. During the pairing procedure, you press a primary button first and then a secondary button, and the receiver learns the transmitter ID and those button IDs. In my case, I'm interested in having the bottom button as the primary button and the top button as, as the secondary, but you might want it the other way around. So how do we do this? This is about very briefly shorting these two pads. When the LED lights solidly, it's indicating that it is in pairing mode. So let's try it. There we go. Now first I'll select the bottom button as primary, the top button as secondary. Okay, it should now be paired. And I think it should also have reverted to momentary mode, which is the first mode you set if you wait for just one flash. Yes, momentary mode. Holding it down, nine volts, release, back down to ground. I hope that was useful. Here's a table listing all the available modes.